Okay, welcome back to Comic Book History, episode 72. Yeah, I haven't done this in a month, so let's just do it now. Now, you're probably thinking, Nick, where's your Leeds, where's Silver Darkness review? Well, it's getting late. I just rather save for tomorrow. Yep, this matter tomorrow, I also got a couple new anime to work on. But in the case of this one, what am I discussing for this one? This was discussed in the Legion of Superheroes. Now, two episodes back, back in episode 69, no, 70, 70, I discussed the Pre-Zero version, which is the most well-known version of Legion of Superheroes. This was discussing two versions of Legion because, well, they're not exactly wrong for a very long period of time. No, they're not. The first one discussed in this video is the Post-Zero version. This was around from 1994 to about the year 2001. If I'm guessing about that right, yes. I believe so. It's quite interesting, the fact that it's like this. Yeah, the fact that in 2001, that's pretty much when this version of the group just ceased to exist. Yeah, because they had a rebooted version that comes right after this one. Mm-hmm. Yes. They take up of the League of Heroes title. They took up issues 62 to 125, issue 1 million annual 6 and 7, the Legionnaire's Towel, 1981, 1 million annuals 2 and 3, and issue 0. They also had two mini series publishers at this point, Legion, Legend of the Legion, probably expanded the, the, this backstory of this version, and Legion Science Police. We had a couple one shots Superman pl plus Legion of Superheroes, Sovereign Sand plus Legion of Superheroes. And, of course, like, a lot of sporadic appearances up until the Freewood version of the, of the group. Bless you! Welcome. Yes. Aside from that, they also had a Legion Lost series, which this technically was, like, the last thing they published. Yeah, there's some things unique about this version. Number one, the fact they lost their connection to the Legion Super, to Superboy. Yeah, this version had no encounters with Superboy when, when Superboy was, when he was a teenager. Yeah, I have no idea why in the world they did this for. Of course, this run was by Mark Wade and Stuart Ibnett. Yeah, this is the era that they worked on the book. And also, what I can tell from reading the issues, on the covers, they had these diamonds on the cover. Yes. Something that apparently DC found success in because of the fact that all the suit man titles basically had this. And since the Superheroes is loosely associated with Superman. So, why not basically do the same thing with their titles, where you have one number of issues start here, and the very next issue, boom, it's Legionnaires. Yeah. That's pretty much how it was. Another difference is the fact that they had Cosmic Boy get a relationship with Saturn Girl. Lightning Lad is nowhere to be seen. Yeah, he doesn't hardly exist. Apparently, he apparently died and just never was resurrected. Yeah, it was only around for just a few short years, and then just the book just ends. Yes. It was an odd particular point, and aside from some minor changes, thanks to the, the Zero Hour crossover done by Dan Jurgens, not really much difference between this one and the original one, except this one was probably not big a success as the original version of League of Superheroes, which that existed for almost 40 years at that point, so they brought it back in 2009. Yes, and then, thanks to a appearance in the pages of Teen Titans, which brought about the return of kind of this version of the team, which basically involved two issues of Teen Titans and a special, the Teen Titans Legion Special, done by Jeff Johns, of course. This layer led to the three move version of the team, which this is by far the shortest incarnation of the team. It was only around just for a few short years, it started with the Teen Titans Legion special, and then you had a 50-issue volume of the Legion of Superheroes, where basically the first 15 issues and issue 37 50 are known as simple Legion of Superheroes. For issues 16 and 36, it's Supergirl Legion of Superheroes. And of course, we get to reference issue 850 of Action Comics, Fair and issues 4 and 6 of Brave of the Bold, and of course, it's Final Crisis Legion of Three Worlds. Now, here's something unique, interesting about this volume. This one, because it's an every version, who is the writer of this book? Jim Shooter. Yep, at this point, I think that DC thought as though, 
why did I bring back Jim Shooter to write this book? I mean, after all, he did kind of, in a way, start his career with the Legion of Superheroes, writing the very story that brought back the, brought back the character of Lightning, of Lightning Lad after he died. Yeah, aside from the fact this run lasted for 50 issues, in case you anything like anything really noteworthy, aside from the fact that it's a very good book, not a really, like, it's been some time since I've read these issues. And aside from the fact, this is this is commonly referred to as the three movers because the third reboot. Yeah. It's interesting to say the least, the fact, despite the fact this was, they say created by Mark, Mark Mayberry Kitson, despite the fact that the writer was mostly Jim Shooter writing this book. And of course, Mark Wade. Yeah, and of course, Francis Minipold wrote the book. Yeah, not really else a lot of the say about this book, aside from the fact they actually had the Kira Zarel briefly join the lead superheroes. When she first joined, she thought it was basically dreaming. That she was basically a los- that she was hallucinating she was in the future. Yeah, this was like this for the brief period of time she was basically on the on the title. And then the course is how it just ended. And of course they wrapped up the storyline with this version and the in the Posera version in the final crisis of Legion of Three Worlds, which was the last appearance of the two rebooted versions of, of the group. And right after this miniseries wrapped up, DC just switched to using the Prezera version uh, from this point forward up until around, like, 2000... Uh, I think around since... Up until... I would probably say when Brian Michael Bendis brought back the group in the pages of Action Comics. Related to, like, the, the first Monday... The first present version appearance of the United Federation Planets. Yeah. And aside from that, there's not really like a lot really big noteworthy things aside from the fact that, well, these particular people. Now, mostly put anyways, like, they would pretty much have like mostly a lot of the same members per se. Like, not really much anything new here. I mean, you had Gunzelli, Night Girls, Susie, Turtle. Yeah, there's not really like a lot of really like new characters who joined during this version. The reboot version, well, they had briefly, well, Lightning like called Live Wire for some reason, despite the fact it was also the name of a Superman villain. Yeah, I have no idea why in the world they call him. Live wire. It's kind of basically quite odd to say the least. And they also triad, apparition, chameleon, probably chameleon boy. Triad is basically Chipper Girl, Phantom Girl's apparition. Yeah, I don't. It's kind of strange though. They actually changed the name of a lot of these characters for like no reason at all. Probably because oh, it's a basically a reboot of the group. So yeah, aside from that, it just. Well, they even brought in a reboot version of Mon Al called Mon Ul. Yeah. It's just, wow. It's like, I'm looking at the group members and I'm like, really? Yes, really. I know this one's kind of short to basically discuss this group, these two versions of Lisa Bills, but it's not really a lot of really like noteworthy things I can think of when it comes to these two particular eras. Because, well, it's been some time since I've read these books. So, yeah, I'm sorry the fact I can't exactly discuss any more of this particular, these particular groups. Like, I had more fun talking about the pre-Zero version than I did the post-Zero or even the 3 version. Now, I have already discussed the Bendis version of the group. I consider this to be the Bendis version because the fact they make some big changes. Like... Adding John Kent to the group. Having R.J. Brandle will be basically changed to a woman. Excuse me. And the president of the United Federation Planets. There is no mention of the fact that R.J. Brandle is the benefactor of the League of Heroes. Yeah, there's no mention of that in that book. But if you look at basically like this version, the, the post version, and the 3 version... There's not really a lot of really major differences aside from some code name differences. But story wise, it just just a continuation basically whatever they were doing. 
Yes, I'm not really sure why Mark Wait. Mark Wait is that stayed in this group with, with, with Legion of Heroes for a long time. I'd say for like a decade. He saved Legion of Heroes. But I do think bringing back Jim Shu to write the Legion of Heroes definitely was a good idea. I mean, the book is always interesting to read. Though the only problem was the three version was not as successful, well, probably for DC anyways, as the original version of Legion of Heroes or the first rebooted version. And probably by far the least successful one is probably going to be the Bendis version. Because it only lasted 12 issues and had like a two-issue miniseries like in that particular book. I own both trades and that basically continue that run. Yes. But there's not really a lot to say about the Legion of Superheroes when it comes to the reboot versions per se. Aside from the fact it's just some good storytelling. Yeah. But that's going to be pretty much it. I, normally these videos are a lot longer. But in the case of these two versions of these superheroes. For me personally. There's not really a lot to talk about here. Not really no. But in case you're curious though. What am I going to talk about for my next comic book history? Hmm. Well the one, one group I could possibly discuss is probably... Either X Force or X Factor. That might be interesting. Discussing one of those two groups. Yeah, I have a lot more familiarity with those two groups. Than I do the the reboot version Legion of Heroes. So which one do I do? Probably do X Force because that's gonna be interesting. Okay, to the next video. Bye.